So the genesis was a question, and the question was, if you could build anything in the world, what would you build? Let's make something we can drive to the Baja, race a thousand miles, and drive home. In 1967, GM wanted to go after Jeep. And uh, Vic Hickey, who's the guy who made the lunar rover that's sitting on the moon, got together with Hearst, and in 30 days, they built the original boot. I started thinking about Steve McQueen's Baja boot, which I had bought about 10 years ago at an auction. And no one knew what it was, no one cared what it was. This is before the McQueen stuff went crazy and people paid $800,000 for the sports coat he wore and bullet. And the first time he came down to the Baja, he was afraid people would recognize him and not take him seriously. So he grew a little mustache when he went down here as a disguise, basically. Everybody still knew who it was. What I wanted to do was to make a new version of Steve's boot that stayed true to that but was like the ultimate SUV. You can draw anything, but that doesn't mean you can build it. So the challenge, the biggest challenge for us is to translate what we know from sports car racing with eight 24-hour on-road races and find a team who can help us translate that to an off-road vehicle. The genesis of this project is really fascinating because it, was, it started with a phone call, you know, and over the years I've had these phone calls, you know, people call up, hey, I want to race Baja, you know, and so you, song and dance and you know me doesn't nothing happens of it. So I called SCORE, I spoke to the technical director Jose, I told him who I was and what I wanted to do and he said well you know I have this friend Darren you should talk to and so I called Darren and Darren said well it's a crazy idea but let me think about it let me take a look at the boot and he came we met and he said you know what this is if you want to do it we'll do it and I said look what I want to do though is have a road legal version that you could race with. I knew the Baja boot. Everybody who's raced here knows the story and seen the pictures. And, and I took a deep breath. I thought, wow, that's a really interesting idea. Because you know, you're right. The Baja boot's super cool, but the technology's moved on. And I, I was fascinated. We shipped the original boot out to uh, Elliot at Armada. And we had it there for the whole engineering process. And they looked at the chassis, and they looked at the engine placement and everything. The chassis is very, very similar. The engine placement, the engine being front to back, sort of a mid-engine car, but front to back, the four-wheel drive, two-wheel, four-wheel drive architecture is very, very similar. And also with Elliot uh, from Pollock from Amada Engineering, who ended up hiring you know, him and his guys, have done an outstanding job and uh, been really great to work with. So they were critical in this whole process. The actual engineering of the car uh, was done there at Amada. Um, the, the CAD was all drawn, uh, and then uh, the prototype was built there. The boot makes every day the Baja 1000. And so um, I want people to look at the boot and have fun. You can't. You can't look at it, you can't drive it and not have fun, not have a smile on your face. And Elliot, he said, you know, I'm tempted to just turn around and go back into the desert and drive it all weekend. You don't want to stop. You know, it, we've had people drive it for the first time, not off-road people, you know, including Jim and Jesse Glickenhaus who don't have any off-road experience. And just to see their faces when they get in the car and drive it reminds you of that first time you jumped an off-road car. In 1969, the original Bronco raced the original boot. And uh, the Bronco won one year in the 1,000 mile, and the boot won in the uh, 500 mile. So it was a real legitimate rivalry, Chevy versus Ford and all of that stuff. I mean, it was fantastic. And then crazily enough, 50 years later, Ford is here with their Bronco and we're here with our boot and we're going to be racing each other in the same class. So it's really kind of cool. We, we didn't plan it that way, but it's history coming around and we get another chance.
big companies have to operate a certain way, and, and I understand that. And they're corporate, and they have motorsports divisions, and they have marketing divisions, and they have engineering divisions. And the guys that were there were old school and were enjoying themselves, and they were real legitimate racers. But I just got this flash, you know, we're different than Ford. We're, we're not all wearing, you know, pristine Ford uniforms with Ford Motorsports written on it. Um, we're kind of eclectic. Everybody wears what they want. We're more like old school. And um, I'm really happy about that. And also the, the story that it tells when you drive. I mean, you come from a racetrack environment where you're driving around a three mile or eight mile loop or 12 mile, the Nuremberg ring. You know, it, it's awesome. It's amazing performance, but it's very repetitive. Here, you do 100 miles and not see the same corner. So it's a very, and it's very tranquil. Um, so I think when you see guys coming from other racing environments or driving experiences and coming into off-road, you, you get reminded, and that's refreshing. You know, uh, I've been doing this for a long time and it's been a passion since I was a kid. And, and uh, I love seeing that expression on people's faces when they go through their first whoops at 60 mile an hour or you know, jump a car or slide it in a corner. Uh, and then we all stop and check out you know, the beach where we're at or, or uh, you know, have a great meal with amazing chefs down here. And it's like, I mean, you just can't, you can't do that with a normal car. And I think that um, you know, that's the beauty of it.